welcome back to Cracking the Cryptic. Um, it's a late video for me today, um, but I want to take a look at a different sort of puzzle. And this is one of my favourite logic puzzles. It's called a Star Battle. And it has, on reflection, some quite interesting similarities to the sandwich Sudoku that we've been covering on the channel recently. Um, and in sandwich Sudoku, it's all about positioning ones and nines in rows and columns and you have to be very careful about where you place them. Now in Star Battle we're not placing ones and nines, we're not placing any numbers, we're placing stars. And in this puzzle what we need to do is to, is to place two stars in every row and every column and every irregularly shaped box. And there's only one other rule, as in I suppose most classic problems, the rules are very very simple. And the only other rule is that if you put a star here, for example, I'm going to be notating my stars with O's, then there cannot be a star in any adjacent cell. And that includes diagonals. So we couldn't have stars in any of these positions. It's starting to look a bit like Minesweeper when we do this. But that's the only other rule. And from that, we're, we should be able to complete these puzzles. Now, this particular puzzle uh, was it appeared uh, last weekend in the World uh, Puzzle Championship Grand Prix. Uh, this is a monthly competition hosted by different countries every month. It's an online online exam, I guess, and it was Poland's turn last weekend. And this puzzle was composed by uh, Jan Morozowski, um, who is uh, one of the world's very best Sudoku solvers. And it turns out a rather brilliant puzzle setter as well. Um, I've done some of Jan's puzzles before on the channel, and I am sure that this will be uh, a good example. Now, how do we start Star Battle Puzzles? Well, um, there are a couple of tips I'm going to give you. Now, derived from what we said before about no star uh, can be next to another star, there's something very simple that we can say about 2x2 two two boxes. So if we have this 2x2 two two box here that the, I'm showing with the movement of the cursor, how many stars can we place in this 2x2 two two box? Now, it should be very obvious that we can only place one star in any 2x2 two two set of cells. Um, but that simple fact can lead to some uh, simple deductions, I suppose. So let's have a look at this S shape here. That's the place I would start. It's often best to start with star battles with the, uh, the smallest irregular area, as often that's the place we can make an immediate deduction. So let's have a look. We've got a we've got a two by two box here, and we've got a two by two box here. Now we know therefore that the maximum number of stars that we can have in these separate two by two areas is one in each area, and we know that the shape must have two stars in it. So that tells us that there cannot be a star here, there cannot be a star here, and there must be a star in one of those positions. Now, if I was doing this on, on paper with a, with a pencil, what I would do is I draw a little sort of loop around these squares to indicate that there can only be one star within them. But here, I'm just going to use different numbers. So where, where we see numbers here, twos indicate there is exactly one star in cells marked two. There's exactly one star in cells marked one. Now, what would we do next? Right, well, actually this is nice. What we can do next is one of the classic star battle tricks. Now what we need to do is to imagine a line coming down the grid. Now I'm sort of drawing this imaginary line. If I get a chance later, I'll highlight it. But what, we can, what can we say about the area to the right of my imaginary line? Well, we know it's going to contain one, two, three, four, five columns. Therefore, it must contain 10 stars. Now if we look at the areas completely contained to the right of my imaginary line, we have this shape here, that's one, this huge shape here, that's two, this shape, that's three, and this shape, that's four. So there are four complete areas to the right my imaginary line, but I still need to put two more stars in, so those two stars are going to have to come from the other areas poking in 
to the right hand side of the grid. So there are four cells, are there? One, this cell, this pokes in, this cell pokes in, and these two cells down here poke in. So we can't put two stars in this area at the bottom, so there are actually only three positions for the two stars that we're going to have to place in what's this column six here? And we know so we know it's one of these two squares, this square this square, so two of those three areas. We also know that there can't be any stars in these squares here because we know that we need to, we're going to need these poking in areas to provide us the extra stars we need. Ah, I see. And this means, let's have a look at this square. Can we put a, square, a star in this square? And look at what this beautiful shape up here does to the logic. If I put a star here, not only can I not place stars in any adjacent squares, but this funny shape here, which hits the, the, uh, the top row of the grid, needs to still contain two stars. I've not put any stars in it yet. So those two stars are going to have to go here and here. And look what that does to the puzzle. Immediately breaks it, because now I have three stars in row one. So I can actually use that fact to reduce. There cannot be a star in this square. The stars must be here and in one of these two squares. So let's just tidy this up now in terms of notation. I can put X's all around this first star. And I know one of these two squares contains a star. So that fact means that neither of these two squares can contain a star. If you imagine there's a star in one of these two positions, it should be pretty clear that whether it's here or here, in the orthogonally connected squares horizontally, there cannot be stars. So we reach this situation. Now let's have a look at this shape here. I still need to put two stars within it. Using our two by two rule, I can put one star here and one star here. So this is a star. This can't be a star now because we have to completely Oh, this is great now. So now I get to place the star here and here. Let's do our X's. And you can immediately see as well here that I've now put two stars into row 10. So I can place some more stars or, or X's like that. Hmm. Okay. So now what I see is this shape here still needs to have one more star in it. And that star is going to have to go in one of these positions. So that means there must be X's in those two positions. Right. And now we can we can still do some work on this shape. We started to do it when we can sort of hypothesized about the star here, but look, there can be I need to put two stars into these five cells. And using the two by two rule, the maximum number of stars I could put in this area would be one. The maximum number of stars I could put in this area would be one. So I know that there's going to be stars here and a different star there. So can we do anything with that? So some of the things I'm thinking about here is I'm noticing there's a star in one of these two squares and there's got to be two stars in this area. Therefore, I need four stars altogether for the final two columns of the grid. So there's going to have to be a star in one of those cells. And that means there must be one star exactly in the remaining squares in this funny shaped block here. So we can place sixes into those squares. And I don't think I can say too much about this at the moment. Um, so, what next? Well, there must be one star in this column. That's my other, I suppose, big tip for star battles, is that where you should always try and identify rows and columns that have very few uh, different shapes taking them up, because often there's little um, little weak points in the logic of the puzzle that you can exploit as a solver. So I can see here, for example, if I 
there's got to be one star in that set of sevens because I need to put two stars in the column and this shape obviously it's going to have to have two stars so there must be exactly one star in that area as well now can we do anything more with that one two three not quite there could still be stars in either of these two squares so we can't assume that the star is in either of those two squares so we're going to have to look for a different sort of breaking point here right now this area is interesting to me I need to put two stars in this area ah got it got it got it right okay so imagine let's look at this square this is a weak point in the puzzle now if this square is a star what is the implication of that and it's very important to focus on these twos here if I place a star here this two cannot be true anymore so this one must be true so we would have a two stars now in this column now where can I put two stars now in this this area I can't do it it's impossible I'd have to put them both here and they would be orthogonally connected so what does all that mean just to go back to where we were this square here cannot contain a star that is an X and does that matter that's a good question isn't it um, it does matter a little bit because if we now look at this column and ask ourselves these two columns sorry I need to put four stars into these two columns. Now this area is going to provide two of them. This, These two numbers here are going to provide another one so I'm going to need one of these eights to be true. And therefore these eights are not true. Now immediately this square becomes weak. I can't put a star here because I'm going to eliminate one of the areas I need to put my stars in this box. And the moment I place this X, all of a sudden this unusual shape we've been using is reduced to a size where I can do a 2x2 two two trick on it. So I can put exactly one star in this area, and therefore there must be a star in this area too. And what number haven't I used? I'm, I think I might be having to use letters now. So there's a star there, and there's another star in this area. Now these two A's can't have a star next to them so we can't have stars in either of those two squares and again look look what's happened now this area has now become weak and this is one of the lovely things I love about star battle is this little trick it was this one cell that we managed to make progress with and all of a sudden it's having such profound consequences around the grid so let's have a look at it we can put exactly one star in this 2 by 2 area let's label that C and therefore this area, this we need two stars in the box, that has to be a star. So that resolves the twos, look, that's not a star, this is a star. And now I have two stars in this row. So this is not true anymore, and this is not true. Ooh, now that's, now we're cooking with gas. Because now this is a star, means this is not a star. I can put X's into those two squares because I've now completed this row. These C's, one of them must be true, so this cannot be a star. And that means, oh, let's put some more notation in. There's a star in one of those squares and a star in one of these squares. Two, three. Yeah, that's all working, I think. So let's come back down here. We've not done anything yet with this shape. We know it's got still got to have two more stars in it. I can put exactly one star in this area. So this five is no longer possible. If this five was true, if it was a star, I wouldn't have enough space to put my two stars into this area. So this is not true. And there is a star. I might be able to use ones again now. Yeah. There is a star in one of those three positions, and there must be a different star in one of these two positions. Now that allows me to put X's into those two squares, and look at this, it's lovely. So now I only have two fives left, 
So this cannot be a star. I would eliminate both of these cells, which means that this, this square is a star. Now these two squares are not stars, and this is a star. Now we've now completed our stars in this column, so this is a star. There's only one 5 left in the grid, so it must be a star. Let's eliminate the squares around that. And I think there's a couple of things I can see here. First thing would be this. We know one of these Cs is true. So this cannot be a star, otherwise we would have three stars in the row. Let's do that. Now let's... Oh, now I thought I was about to make a mistake there, so I don't want to make mistakes. That would be silly. Um, so what's the next step we could do here? I feel like we're right on the cusp of really making some progress. Uh, one's here, eight's here, four's. One, two, three, four stars. These sixes are very strange. They're very disconnected. I feel like I should be able to do something with them, though. Ah, oh, sorry. I was being silly. Obviously, this star here allows me to put star there and that is actually believe it or not again you could see I was floundering there trying to work out the next bit of logic and I just missed this simple square but the moment I resolve it look what happens now one of these fours is true and it pairs up with the star here so neither of these sixes is true and now it's gorgeous isn't it because now let's have a look at this row and this row and count the number of stars we can place. We know one of these sixes is true. So we've got one, two, three. We know one of these eights is true. That's four. We only, there's only going to be four stars in these two rows. So this E is not true. These sevens are not true. Now these one of these two E's is a star. So neither of those D's is a star. So that D must be the star. And you can see that's going to eliminate the perfect number of sevens to force this to be a star. Fantastic. This is so gorgeous. I mean, now we can eliminate those. This A must now be true. Therefore, this six cannot be true because we've already got two stars in a row. This must be true. Um, we must be very close now. We can eliminate this one. This B must be true here before we get to place this. And now look, we've now got, um, well, we can eliminate that because of the column, but you can see that this square also cannot be true now, otherwise we'd have three stars in row one. So we finish it off there, and let's just double check it. Da, 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 da. It all looks good to me. So that is how to do a star battle puzzle. I do hope you enjoyed it. Oh, except it would have been a fail in a competition. There we go. Let's resolve that before uh, I say goodbye to you. I really hope you enjoyed it. As I say, if you did, let us know because I can do more of these. Now we've got this uh, new software. It's all very achievable. If you enjoy the channel, please subscribe. We really appreciate it. And I'll be back soon with another edition of Cracking the Cryptic.